Fire Nation is amassing villains, and it's up to you and your teams of heroes led by Avatar Ong, Tuff, Sokka, Katara, and Zuko to stop them. This is Avatar The Last Airbender Fire Nation Rising, which was designed by Patrick Marino and is based on the Rising game system designed by Andrew Wolfend and is published by The Op, who sponsors this video. Hey everyone, I'm Mike Murphy, the Brothers Murph, and I am here with Board Game Geek. Now, I've got a lot to do to prepare for the Day of Black Sun, so let's get this game down to the table so I can teach you how to play Avatar The Last Airbender Fire Nation Rising. In Avatar The Last Airbender Fire Nation Rising, one to five players will be working together while controlling their own team of heroes and hoping to overcome the Fire Nation by being victorious in three final battles before they are overcome. On each turn, the active player will visit one of three locations in hopes of recruiting heroes and damaging villains. The Ozai figure, however, is always around and they will cause damage to the heroes and the active player if they are in the same zone they face. Players will play through two main phases in the game. The first phase being the preparation phase where players hope to build up a group of heroes to help their odds at succeeding, and the second phase, final battles, where players will go for victory in the game. Before we start preparing, we need to prepare this game, so let's go over the setup. First, assemble the nine-sided map board and place it in the center of the table with room for cards to be placed around the board. Place the Ozai figure facing a random location. Next, take the Ruin card and place it near the center board and select a difficulty of easy, medium, or hard. Based on the difficulty level, choose a balanced track card and place it to the left of the Ruin track card. Put track markers at the bottom of each track. Shuffle the Fire Nation cards and place them face down near the map board. Now each player must choose a team card. You have the options of Avatar Ong, Katara, Sokka, Tuff, and Zuko, and each comes with their own starting hero card which is collected from the character deck. In a 4 or 5 player game, each player also begins with a starting ally card indicated on their team card. Next, it is time to prepare the character deck. First, take any starting heroes that were not selected by a player and add them to the character deck. For a beginner game, add 10 random villains, and for more challenging experiences, you can add even more villains all the way up to 13 villains for the expert level. Shuffle these villains into the character deck and set it near the map board. From this deck, draw out 9 cards that will be placed around the 9 spaces of the map board. You are now ready to play. All right, so now we have our starting hero, some dice, and we are ready to fight villains and recruit heroes. Each turn, the active player will go through several steps in order and ultimately roll and assign dice after the Fire Nation resolves their card, potentially dealing damage and changing the game's state. So let's take you through a player's turn in the game. Players take turns going clockwise around the table. On a player's turn, they will first place their team token in one of the three locations of the board. Each location on the board has room for three character cards and in the second phase of the game, a final battle card. Once the active player has selected a location, they draw the top card from the Fire Nation deck. The Fire Nation cards will show a number between 0 and 2 which indicates how far to move up the marker of the Ruin track. If the top of the Ruin track is reached before players can reach the top of the balance track, the Fire Nation will have an advantage in the second phase of the game. Fire Nation cards also indicate whether the Ozai figure rotates or stays put. They will always face one of the three locations and each turn they can rotate one space clockwise, one space counterclockwise, or stay facing their current location. Once any Ozai movement is settled, heroes in the location the Ozai is facing are dealt one damage each. If the active player's team token is at that location, all heroes that player controls are damaged as well. Any villains in this location will also activate and follow the instructions listed on their card. If the Day of Black Sun has occurred already, the final battle card will also carry out its ability. More on this later. Once the Fire Nation has finished resolving any abilities, it's time for the active player to act. Let's say that's you. First, you will collect the four dice shown on the team ability card. Be sure to check the heroes in your line as some heroes also provide additional dice. Pie Show tokens can also be turned in to add a matching die to your pool to be used for that turn. One note, Pie Show tokens can be shared freely among all players and dice are limited to what is available in the game. Once you have all of your dice, roll them. After each roll, you must assign one or more dice to cards or you must discard one die from your pool. You may then roll again and will continue this process until you run out of dice to roll. Once dice are placed on a card, they cannot be removed so choose your spots wisely. There are many places and ways to use your dice. You will often assign dice to heroes and or villains at your location. In order to place a die on a hero or villain, you must place a die that matches one of the symbols on that hero or villain. The dice faces are Avatar, Water, Earth, and Fire. Each color of die will be weighted toward one of the types of symbols and will even feature a double symbol which counts as two of that symbol. This can be powerful, but note that you cannot split this effect over separate cards. If you match all the symbols on a villain, you will damage that villain this turn and you may damage them multiple times by matching their symbols multiple times. If you match all the symbols on a hero, you will recruit them this turn and they will be added to your team and provided the abilities listed on their card. You can also add dice to the balance track to move that token up to a maximum of one space per turn. 
In order to move up the track, you must pay the cost shown in the next space on the track. Dice can also be assigned to character cards you have on your team as some abilities list a cost in order to activate. Other character abilities are passive or may affect heroes that are adjacent to them. Finally, if there's a final battle card at your location, you can assign dice to it, but only if that location has zero villains. If all the symbols of a final battle card are matched, one damage is dealt to that card, bringing the players one step closer to victory. Once you have assigned all your dice, you will resolve these dice making use of any character abilities, damaging villains gaining a Pai Show token for each damage dealt, possibly removing them from the game, and recruiting heroes. When a hero is recruited, they are added to your line of hero cards. Cards can only ever be added to one of the ends of your card line, and cards may never be rearranged. If you match the symbols on the next space of the balance track, you will move up the balance marker one space. It is a race between balance and ruin to the tops of their tracks. If the players reach the top of the balance track before the top of the ruin track is reached, the players will gain a significant advantage in the second phase of the game. Once all dice have been resolved, return all dice to the pool, remove your team token from the map board, and remove any villains or final battle cards that have full damage to a discard area off the board. Any heroes in your row with full damage at this point are also removed from play and any gaps in your hero row will be closed by shifting your row of cards. Beware, for each lost hero brings the Fire Nation closer to victory and if ever 10 or more heroes are defeated, all players lose immediately. Any empty spaces around the board will now be filled and play proceeds clockwise to the next player. Players will take turns like I've just described and try their best to recruit heroes and manage damage from villains in the Fire Nation as they try to move up the balance track, but the Fire Nation is in a race to reach the top of the Ruin track and whoever gets there first triggers the Day of Black Sun, which shifts the game into the second phase, Final Battles. When one or both markers reach the top of their track on a turn, the Day of Black Sun occurs. If the top of the balance track was reached first, or if it reached at the same time as the Ruin track, all villains with a black symbol are immediately removed from play. Any subsequent villains with the symbol will be removed immediately when drawn for the rest of the game. If the Ruin marker reaches the top of the track first, any and all heroes with a Black Sun symbol will be removed from the board and any teams, and they too will be discarded immediately for the rest of the game. Once all such heroes or villains have been discarded, play one final battle card in each of the three locations. It is now up to the players to defeat all three final battle cards in order to win the game. Play proceeds mostly as normal, however, the Fire Nation will no longer advance up the Ruin track, and each turn, the Fire Nation will activate the final battle card in their location if one still remains there. Each final battle must be damaged twice, and damage is dealt out if each of its symbols is matched by a dice face assigned to that card. When a final battle has a second damage, it is immediately flipped over and the players gain the reward shown on the back, and the battle card is then removed. Keep in mind that final battles can only be damaged if there are no villains present at that location. Players will continue taking turns until they win or lose. All players lose immediately when 10 or more heroes are defeated. Note that if the Ruin track is completed first, any and all heroes with sun symbols that get discarded count toward this lost hero's limit. All players can also lose if any one player loses all of the heroes on their team. But if players can stay in the game long enough to defeat all three final battles, they win. And that's how you play Avatar The Last Airbender Fire Nation Rising. This game is all about teamwork and timely use of hero abilities. Don't be afraid to share your Pi Show tokens as they can provide many useful effects and you gain one every time you deal out damage in the game. If you do these things, you just might find yourself successful in thwarting the Fire Nation. And if you'd like to learn more about this game, be sure to check out its page at Board Game Geek. And until next time, I'm Mike Murphy. I've been here with Board Game Geek, and that is how you play Avatar The Last Airbender Fire Nation Rising. Have a great day.